Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will call Scottsburg City Council on this May 24th, 2021, the year of our Lord. Order. And uh, so the first thing we have is a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you all wouldn't mind to stand up, we'll have the prayer, the opening prayer of the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we come before you tonight and uh, to thank you for a day that you've given unto us. It is a gift from your hand and it has been enjoyed. It has been a joy to many who, who saw a birth or birthdays today. It has been saddest to for those who have lost a loved one or have gotten a diagnosis, diagnosis that has been bad. But Father, in all these things, it is life. And Father, we thank you that we've been able to be in this pilgrimage of life these, these years, and they go by quickly. Father, we just uh, thank you for each day that you give us. And we thank you for the, the gifts you give of love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. He said, in this world there will be many troubles, but take care of will overcome the world. So, Father, we, we claim you will never leave us nor forsake us. We pray for your wisdom for this city, for this county, for this council, Father, and for our citizens, and for your protection, that we, that we live life to its fullest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next thing on our agenda is the roll call by the clerk treasurer, Jan Hardy. Mayor Amy. Here. Chris Albertson? Here. Bill Hoagland? Here. Rick Mann? Here. Christian Evans? Here. Chuck Rose? Here. Hey, we're all in attendance. Uh, next thing is the approval of the minutes of the May 10th meeting. So we will entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Second. Rose makes the motion to approve the minutes as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Bill we'll Holden seconds. So now is your comments or questions or revisions on anything you see in the minutes? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Unanimous. Thank you very much. The next thing on our agenda is a public comment time. The Scottsburg City Council will accept public comments. Individuals wishing to address the council will be asked to come forward and state their name for the record. Each person will have five minutes to voice their opinion. Remarks should focus on issues and not be used to target employees or elected officials. <coughs> Is there anyone here tonight that would like to come forward? Okay, please come forward. State your name for the record, please. My name is Mrs. Lackley. Good evening. Good evening. The floor is yours, Ms. Lackley. Um, I want to address the City Council uh, about possibly uh, reinstating or uh, something about no raise ordinances. Um, I live on Michael Drive, okay? Walmart seems to be a problem now. I'm not getting no sleep. Uh, our law officers have done everything they can do in coordination with Walmart. And uh, Larry and I are even thinking about selling that. He is not in good health. He's not getting no sleep. And we both know that's not a good thing. So I'm asking that we consider reinstating some noise ordinances to where we can get, and possibly uh, we need to find something for these teenagers to do. We really do. We need to offer them something. Uh, I don't know what else I can do. I have spoke with them myself personally. I told them, I said, children, I don't care if you park here. What is bothering me is when your music is so loud that it's rattling the dishes in my home. My husband cannot hear his TV for it. Uh, I basically told him if you could sit here quietly and enjoy each other's company, you'd never hear from me. 
And that's the same way with our city police officers. They go over there several times a night. They run them on. They come back. Uh, I feel like they've done all they can do, and it's really not their place to babysit the Walmart parking lot. Uh, I don't know what the solution is, but I'm begging you guys to find one. Larry and I love our home. We're proud of it. I'm sorry. We put a lot of work. Terry, you know this. You've seen it. Immaculate. 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 You guys do an immaculate job. And I just ask them for some help to resolve this issue. I have talked all I can talk. I've uh, asked state representatives for help. I've uh, talked to city officials. I've talked to Chris Owens. I've talked to our police officers. I can't talk more. There's nobody else left. And I'm just begging for some help here to see if we can't get something resolved quickly. Um, I don't want to have to start over. I don't want to have to move out of Scottsburg. It's my own town. But I don't want my husband suffering because he's not getting the sleep he needs. And you can kind of understand that. Ms. Lumpy, tell, tell the council where you live. I live at 136 North Michael Drive. In Scottsford. And where's that in relation to Walmart? A block away. A block away. And uh, I can probably, uh, I'm on this side, and then I have other homeowners. Uh, they're afraid to come forward because they're afraid of retaliation. I tried to get them to come with me, unfortunately, that was their issue. And uh, retaliation from the kids in the trucks, you're saying? Or yes, they're afraid of the teenagers retaliating against them. Yeah. And uh, I gave her some pictures to post up there. I don't know if we're able to do it because my phone's a cheapy. Nice old chat. There's one picture. And, and it does take me a second, so give me just a second. Or if you want, or I can go. Yeah, on. and I went over it the other night, and there was probably 50, 60 of them. And they're, that's dangerous when you got that many groups of together. And it's not good behavior. And um, as you can see, this is what's happening at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. These are marks that they've left in the parking lot. They're destroying the parking lot as well, the way I see it. Several people have been hit over there. And it's getting really dangerous because what they're doing is they're coming out of that parking lot at a high rate of speed. They're, you know, smoking their tires. And then they're starting at Walmart and they just open it wide open through what I call mayonnaise out. If somebody pulls out, they're done. It's a dangerous situation. Let's, let's ask legal counsel something now. Um, I'm assuming Walmart has cameras. Can, uh, is, can we issue citations on, public, on private property with respect to corporate community? That's a private property. Can we issue citations? I will tell you, their cameras only are on the front row, select section of rows of their parking lot. They do not go anywhere past their front row of uh, park lights in their parking lot, so it only gets the front portion. Yes, and that's what I was told to sweat. Uh, my officer said that Walmart is trying to coordinate with Chief Zellers. Some paperwork needs to be done to turn over to Chris. I spoke with Chris this morning briefly. I also just told him the same thing I told you. We need to get it calmed so, down. So Walmart's position is they want to go forward and yes. this? Yes, okay. yes, but you got to have legal paperwork because it is considered private. So that's being done now? We're trying to get Mr. Zellers to do that paperwork and get it to Mr. Owens. So, and he, I spoke with him this morning. He said he would speak with Mr. <coughs> Zellers. Haven't spoken to him since, so I do not know what the outcome of that was. I had talked to the chief. Um, I think it was the first or second meeting in March of last year. The chief talked to me about a noise ordinance, and then the world fell apart. So I know that that was something that at one point was on the Chief's radar. So I'll start back with him. And see what what we have a noise ordinance. We, we, so we, have, still, a, we have a vehicular noise ordinance that could be applicable in this situation, but um, if a 
kid is in their car playing music that shakes the, that's a vehicle, sound system, why couldn't we enforce that ordinance? We can't. We can't. I mean, I'm, I'm all in favor of passing more, another ordinance if we have to, Josh. If yeah, I think we need to, uh, we need something more comprehensive to okay. I think that was the chief's concern last year. So. But if we could do something immediately before we, because that's what, a month away? But we have been doing that, and, it, and uh, Assistant Chief. Well, I do. Different. I realize that the city police officers are probably tired of hearing me call. I understand that. But they don't understand my position. I'm tired of hearing swollen tired, beating something music, and children screaming loud. And I, like I said, I don't know what else to do. I even talked to them, and I said, kids, I don't, the issue is not that you are here. The issue is that you're disrespecting the neighborhood by having loud music, swallowing your tires. You know, I understand kids have to have things to do. I was a teenager. I wasn't always 60 years old. <laughs> but uh, I also need, you know, they need to have guidance somehow. The city will reach out to Walmart as well to see if they would send their video uh, area more so that we might be able to, uh, it's just like if you run a red light with a camera taking your thing. We can, we can find out who, who's doing this, and we can certainly talk. Well, I always them. felt, too, that once they leave the parking lot and they're on Highway 56, that's a state highway, and it's a 35 mile an hour zone. If you're doing 50 and 60, you're breaking the law. You need to be ticketed or something. There needs to be a result. Does council have any other questions? Ms. Wagner. I don't think we have a question. I think we have a task. I think we mm -hmm. need to figure out a way to strengthen the ordinance or rewrite an ordinance. Right. Um, I don't think that's non negotiable. I, mean, I, I that's think that's where we My question at. was, was we, did we ever clarify as to whether or not we can issue citations, even if it's on Walmart property? Yes, you can issue citations. You can arrest and whatnot all the time for dust from Walmart. That's not an issue. Okay. I think you probably. Defer to Josh, obviously, is tied us into code enforcement um, with the citation program, right? With the, I guess we'll call it. No, this is, I mean, that's. Now he's for the law enforcement issue. Yeah. 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 Um, and as to the current ordinance, it speaks of <coughs> all noise caused by motor vehicles. So, uh, so to, to yeah. me, I think that, that we could, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to Scott and we we'll, can get a, a clear yeah. to the chief. And, but yeah, I'm not saying that we we shouldn't pass a new ordinance, but I I do think that if if a kid's playing their music where they're everybody at two in the morning, I mean, and I, and I'm sorry, I don't know what the city can provide at two or three in the morning. Right. That's financially feasible for a business for a kid to do, but they need to be written a ticket, and that's what we'll do. I mean, you know. Well, um, here's you can my nephew. Right. This was my solution, and you can take it for what it's worth. First time of warning, okay? You've warned them, you've told them, guys, we can't have this. Second time a ticket. Third time, follow through with the sign that's in Walmart. Tow them out. I hate to be like that, guys, but I'm not getting over it. I think it's just a matter of figuring out what tools we can provide mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, and that's enforcement. That's enforcement. And that's what, that's what we're doing. Just to let you know that Scottsford PD in, in enforcement for our safety of our citizens is at 300%. We've had 300% more pullovers. We have 300% more arrest. We will we will, we will yeah. work to that. And as you know, Terry, the other day, the other evening, I left my home and took my husband for a drive because we couldn't even watch TV. And I had my sons over last night. We were sitting on the porch. And I had, we were six foot apart. This is right before dark, and I'm having to scream at them to have a conversation in my own yard. That's how loud uh, Chief Harden will give you before you leave the, the number to call after hours, and uh, you can reach, you can reach uh, dispatch, and they'll send an officer right. That's what I've been doing. And they're there. probably tired of hearing from me. No care. problem. No. We, I mean, I've we'll probably called stuff. them 450 times. We're going to take care. Thank you for I coming. I really listening. appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Sure, I've got something to ask. Sure. Uh, I can understand the ordinance.
ordinance for for this. I think you know where it could be more enforced or or stricter, whatever. But also, Walmart needs to step forward too and say, "You folks can't be here." Yeah, I have spoken with their manager several what do they times. Say? Yes, Jonathan is his first name. Of course, we're not BFF, so I don't really remember his last name. Uh, it can't be totally up to the police department to do it. No. And if that's one thing, Walmart would be willing to trespass them. That getting would give SPD some That is where that paperwork so. that I was just talking about comes okay. into play because they have question? offered that bill. Walmart has discussed that and have escaped full authority to do whatever's necessary. Believe me, I talked to the CEO. I called him and talked with him. I have spoke with all of the managers, evening manager, night manager. I have went in the store at 1 a.m. in the morning and literally told the manager, walk with me. This needs to stop. And he said, well, we run them off and they come back, just like your officers. You know, both of them have jobs to do, and they literally cannot be sitting out in the parking lot 24-7. We will make sure that Scottsbury has a trespass order, and what that means is that we have the right to, to evict people who are disturbing the peace there. And we will evict them, uh, and then it continues, we'll take them, and, and then it'll, it'll get even straight. I'm willing to... Thank you very much. You're so welcome, and I'm it's willing to give them a break. So well, I just want to say that I wasn't saying that Scottsdale Police is not trying. Oh, we don't want to say. I was saying they asked me to make sure that. Yeah, we, that's not what I was saying. It's just like if the kids misbehave in my classroom, I might give them warning, but sooner or later there's got to be attention. And it, we're we're whether and if that's a ticket where there's something to make it pay, it's going to cost you a hundred dollars. Then they're going to think about it again. And, and this will probably hinge on Walmart's ability to give us a trespass notice. And I think they will. So, they I mean, will. something done in there. Okay. Yeah, they were supposed to have done spoken with the police chief about okay. that. And that's in, the, that's in the works. So, thank you for letting us make this awareness. And we'll I thank you for work. taking the time to hear me on this. You know, just let us know if it continues, because once it's in force, you know, we'll, well take care. Well, I think I've been more of a patient. The first year I lived there, it was quiet. The last four years have been pure, you know what. Thank you very much. I've been there five years. Thank you. So thank you. You're most welcome. The next thing we have on our business is, um, secret any more public comment? I'm sorry. Is there any more public comment? Anybody else have anything to say? Now's your time. Okay, hearing that, we'll close the public comment section. Question. And uh, next for the old business, we have Larry Beckley, with a guest with us tonight. Larry, would you introduce your guest and the history of what's going on here lately? Yeah, last week, two weeks ago, we went out and talked about uh, and I sold the airport to Sean and that he wants to purchase the property around the lake and build a house, a hangar, and put a septic tank in and all that. So tonight, I think he's going to show you all kind of his drawings of the lake, the property, what he's uh, trying to do. So. This is Sean Honaker. He owns Honaker Aviation down in uh, Clark County, uh, the old Paps Airport. And I think he's got some maps there. He's going to each one of y'all kind of show you what he wants to do. Good evening, guys. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a Kentucky guy, so uh, I've got all my kids moved out of the house. I've been working in Clark County Airport now for 12 years. Uh, looking to move across the river. So I started looking around for land in this area, the <coughs> lake of the woods, to have a farm, build a runway, build a house, found a piece of property for sale. It was in Scottsburg. I dialed in on it and looked like there was an airport there. So I killed two birds with one stone. And, uh, and now that I've purchased the airport, I'm kind of looking at what I'd like to do for a house, a personal hangar. And what I can do to take what Larry's built on for 30 years and uh, improve for the community, lengthen the runway. Uh, anyway, just kind of excited to be part of the community and I uh, wanted to put a proposal together for you that some of the land that's not usable by the city might make a place, nice place for a little cabin near the lake, near your beautiful reservoir. Uh, so that's what I brought to mind. That was a good overhead picture of that. Understanding that the uh, that the 
lake is the uh, water source for the community. I understand that environmental concerns are of uh, most importance. That's what I've placed on the uh, map where I would probably put a septic system for the proposed residence, which is currently on the property that I currently own. Uh, so the yellow uh, boundary lines is, is your property. And everything east of that uh, that you're looking at there would be mine. So as you can see, the uh, it's kind of a twofold request is that you see the runway that's depicted by the three lines actually goes over onto your all's property in a scenario where if I could lengthen the runway really only for safety reasons, it's really more of a safety area than an active runway. Uh, but that's a pretty hilly area down by the creek, I mean down by the lake, so um, you know, one request is would, would like to purchase the property or at least uh, approval to work over across the boundary line there to smooth out all that property so that the runway can have a bigger safety area than it does now. Uh, as you can see, the, my personal hang of the septic field would be on the land that I currently own, uh, but on a master plan, the lake property serves two purposes for me, and that is the driveway access you can see going through the one cutout on the left bottom side of the page, going all the way out to uh, you know, a proposed little cabin out there on the plains. So to meet your needs, do you have an idea of how many acres you, you would like to require? Uh, it looks like uh, it would be 10 or 11 acres. Is how close to the lake were you proposing to purchase? Uh, I think we spoke to the uh, item. What did they tell you, Chris? Yeah, that spoke to uh, Mount Amick with IDEN. And he said as long as there is a silt fence, as long as there is nothing in the water, as long as there's nothing on the water, and IDEM says you can go right up to the water's edge. So that's whatever the property that entails, I don't know specifically, but what kind of acreage that is, I don't know. So, so for simplicity purposes, I mean, you know, my request would be down to the water, not, you know, I, I would hate to think somebody else came in and bought the last three, but <laughs> I don't know what they do with it. Uh, but the house being a good, you know, 100 and some feet from water's edge, it's not, you know, developable by me or even desire to do so. But, you know, if it's going to be done, I would think that it would make most sense just to be down to the water line. I would like to see counsel if you had time, or if it is your desire. You may not, this may not be your desire, but you know, we spoke about this last time, maybe take bring the time you can actually let us see. I don't know how much the council would be in favor of going down to water's edge. I have some reservations about that, but that's, that's just me. I, I wonder, uh, Josh, I know this is kind of off the cuff, but it probably would be difficult to find out, like at, uh, at Harvey Lake, how, how far how close to the water we the rest is actually on there. I mean, what's the, what's the stage regulation? And this is what I've been, been told, I have to look it up, is it's the um, flood height. So if they're whatever so the flood pool, whatever that is. Exactly, so wherever the height is still away, basically wherever that sea level is. Um, that's what I've always been told. I don't know if I have to confirm that. I mean, the issues from the city standpoint on trying to sell or any, any part of that is we're going to have to have a survey of exactly what is wanted. We're going to have to have two appraisals. And we're going to have to notice um, the sell of that property for bidding and then review those bids and go from there. I have a question, Sean. Are you just wanting the area where you're coming through on your road here and then basically you're based on your own ground here and then just where the house is at and then back here? Is that what you're wanting? Well, that's where my needs are. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm open for ideas and discussion, but like I said, uh, if, if I'm going to invest, you know, a, a lot, a lot of money here, I would just nice and be nice and all protected down toward the water all around. What other lane, what other lane number? 
numbers around the lake on down to the property line. Are there any? No. On down to the water's edge? No. I don't know about uh, the folks that would be on the northwest side. Yeah, the west side, I think, would be about the only place where that would be an issue. Yeah. You guys, the bike, I can pull it up to the GIS map on there if you would like. Okay. And if you look at how close our my current property lines get to the water's edge, uh, I don't think it would ever be accessible by anybody else. <laughs> anyhow. Uh, so is it due to the runways that you, you don't want to bring your drive in from a random lane? I mean, that looks like a, like a much closer access point. Uh, to bring the driveway in where now? It's Miranda Lane, isn't it? Oh, my dad would put you coming Miranda across. Miranda Lane is thick. What happened to that shark? You'd have to actually, when I say instead of the runway, you have to cross the runway. Well, that's what I said. That, that's the yeah. reason for that. Okay. So Miranda Lane is the white line that runs here parallel to the interstate. This yellow <laughs> is the current um, city boundaries, city property line. Um, this is the front. That's Lake Road. This is our old utility, our current water plant. Water department, our sludge lagoons, and then as you can see, that's one of the closest lines. And then this is the area that he is presenting. I apologize. And then this is the other parcel of the lake. That you can see. So as you can see, there's nobody really close to anywhere. alternative for the driveway. What about coming alongside the runway off the property you currently own? Rather than coming across I guess the whole thing is, you know, this is this is 
really something new. I mean, you right. know, we've, we've never considered selling property along the, you know, a reservoir. So, in, in theory, are we okay with that or are we not? Yes. The only reason I, I'm kind of interested in it is because we're going to keep an airport. We're trying to help our local business. I mean, if it was just somebody wanting to, hey, I want a big, beautiful house overlook the lake, I'd be a little less. You know, there are other lakes to find. But I, I, you know, we're talking about uh, a company that's providing us a service, and, and I appreciate that. You know, and I think that's what the whole council does. Um, would you agree? Uh, just, I think that's the reason I would be, I'd be less inclined if it was a developer saying, hey, I want my 10 homes along through here. Well, with the airport there, I don't think that would be very practical anyway. No. <laughs> Do we know, Sean, that roughly, and I know it's kind of off the top of my head, but from this point to the to the drive, do we know what the distance would be there? I don't. Close? Uh, I mean, 150 feet. 150 feet there. Yes. And I'm not even so sure. I walked it a few times, and you can see it's kind of a little lower area that drains in there, and I might even, they would probably be as close, and maybe I even would probably even circle out even further than so that you know that that line is 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 not a you know, okay. such a stone. I get you. I, I would be, I would be very open to the idea. I think going to reiterate Rick's points. I mean, I think obviously someone like Sean is investing in our community, um, providing a huge economic driver for our community. Um, I think we. We have the potential to, you know, obviously get a little bit creative on how we can, you know, do that. I think there will be some concern as far as where that house sets and, and uh, with the water. I mean, I, there could be, as I was talking to Josh about, some setbacks anyway that would prohibit that from happening. Um, but then you're getting in kind of the county ordinances and how that sets up. So um, I think there's a lot to talk through, but I think from just from my standpoint, I would definitely be open to making something work. I think that's what I think the common thread is. So. And I think the idea there, as I said, Sean, I think if, if you would actually put markers on the ground out there. So I've got them out there. Okay, so you already have it out there. So we go out and take a look. That's what I'm saying. Maybe, and, and just to see if, if counts would be satisfied as to where he's stopping at going forward. Because as you can see, Sean is adding on to this property, into our property. But you, what you're not seeing is the property at the bottom of your page. He's adding on there too. Aren't you adding? Uh, yeah, we're open to go out to about 3,600 feet of runway, which really you know brings more accessibility uh, for more aircraft, bigger aircraft. Uh, we're actually going to redo the entire runway. We're going to tile it all, crown it. It should be a 12, 52 week a year usage airport at that point. Uh, but the main thing is the safety areas, the length, and the redoing all the uh, drain. What's the length now? 27, 28. Okay, so basically you're and you're taking it where 35? Yeah, 35, 36 So we're gonna add about 800 feet. Okay, okay. Can we go back to shop to what you said the the procedure would be to sell this if we agreed to we we would have to we need a survey. Okay. So we need an actual legal description of what we would be advertising for sale. We would need two appraisals. And then to get the average, uh, then we would uh, have a resolution authorizing the uh, notice to be published and we would accept it as on the property. So we couldn't just pick one person to sell it to, we'd have to publicly bid it and then buy the group with typically is who will win out. Yeah, and, and it, selling in, you're being from Kentucky, selling public property in Indiana is a much bigger, I lived in Kentucky for a while in Pike County. It's, it's a lot different than... than I didn't realize it was this easy anywhere, so... <laughs> <laughs> Jump through. Yeah. Not, 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 not. I'd be willing to go out and take a look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right through the range of this. Yeah. Uh, Cass, did Sean, do you have a date? Do you think we, we can come out there and see? I'm no, pretty well. So okay. I'm, I've got a question. Pleasure. Mr. President. It doesn't have anything, anything to do. Will it stay at grass strip or will it be asphalt? And it, the plan is where it stays grass. Okay.
what date does Castle have in mind? School will be out in a week from Wednesday. I am available um, the week after school's out, and then I'm going to be gone for two weeks. But you would be like that last week uh, after Memorial Day? Did you come? I can come after school. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah of okay. course. Okay. And then I've got the week after that that oh, I'm in okay. town. Well, Any time during that time. I think we did if we arrange a visit as soon as we can. Yeah. I'm pretty tied up the rest of the week. Maybe next week, Sean, that'd be good. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. Uh, school's over by? Well, I'm, I'm out by 3 o'clock usually. Yeah. I can be there by 3.30 or whatever. Okay. How about the Tuesday after Memorial Day? The Tuesday after Memorial Day? That was the day I was hoping you to. <laughs> well, we won't make this too easy. This is a government. <laughs> <laughs> uh, June 1st, 3.30 be okay? I've got something later that evening, but 3.30 happened later. That's all right with you. Rule 1B, Sean. Rule 1B, Sean. Rule 1B, Sean. Yeah, that worked. At the, uh, we, 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 we kind of replicate the World War II era thing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's uh, awesome. That'll be, you know, well, you see on the draw, but that's going to be my personal uh, personal. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. It won't be red and yellow, but the uh, architect I'll made it that way. It's not to see. Yeah, here. I've got a lot of ice cream. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Oh, thank you guys for your time. I'll see you all first. What questions? Does anybody have any questions for Sean? No. Okay. Thank you. Good? Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, the next thing on our agenda this evening is going to be on new business. On resolution number 2021-R-6A, 20, resolution of the common. Council of the City of Scottsburg, India, authorization, authorizing budgetary transfer to the 2021 budget. And I'll give this to Ms. Jean Hart. Okay. Usually we don't do budget transfers until closer to the end of the year, but uh, with a lot of the uncertainty this year with our budget, we wanted to go ahead and do this uh, transfer now. Um, this is the one that because of some of the movement, uh, you know, in the mayor's office and, uh, you know, one employee coming over there and then going back to the, uh, to the other department, uh, there, there's a shortfall there. So we're just asking to go ahead and transfer this money now just to, to balance all that out. What question is the council? None? I'll make a motion. Go ahead and make a motion to go forward and transfer this. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh -huh. Bill Hope will second to that. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, I'll say aye. Aye. I think that was unanimous. Any names? Unanimous. <laughs> Next thing we have is compliance with statement of benefits. Solar Park, Santec, Inc. Turtek Inc. with Samtech, John Jim, motion needed to authorize the mayor's signature. This is Jess. Um, actually, this is a Jane and all of us. These are our yearly annual compliance of benefits um, in regards to tax abatements that we have. In my, and correct me if I'm wrong, Josh or Jane. But this is their annual statement of compliance of benefits to show that they are in compliance with what they put in their abatement request. And we just need approval for the separate entity for you guys to approve the mayor to sign this. So that we can submit them to the courthouse for recording. We can do one motion approving them all, authorizing them to sign. So we need to determine that the property owner has substantial compliance, then authorize the mayor to sign. And I think
think all of them actually that I reviewed went above beyond what they even proposed. So the, the only one that uh, made my copy was the
per the research that was done five years ago is when the last things were removed off of it and it was city equipment that was removed off of it. I guess I have a question like Chris's question. Since it's already down, I'm I'm honestly in favor of paying the five thousand, but what happens if we don't? Well, I mean, right now, I mean, it's just showing goodwill to the school. I mean, we're here to part. No, I, I'm, I'm for it. I'm just saying, what school. happens if we? And in, I mean, if you don't, you don't. But I mean, you know, I said it, it, to me, I would think that we would, in all favor. And I am in favor. I'm just, I'm just saying, what happens if? I mean, you're exactly right. I, I mean, the school would pay for it, but I mean, the school would advise at some point that the real estate that sets the actual tower itself <coughs> was owned by the city, right? And yeah. their research. Post them bidding and getting that information, I, I don't believe is accurate. It may have been at some point in time, but as the real estate currently sets is owned by the school. So I, that's a new bit of information that the school didn't have at first. Um, we did use the tower at some point, so I mean, that, that's the discussions I've been involved in. And I'm completely fine with it. I, you know, I think it's fair. I'm just, I'm just curious since it's already down. I didn't know how we could. What happens if there's a. <laughs> this is well, I guess the school would have that. to pay for it, you know, but oh it's, it's, it, it's been our. Really power, so I think we well, all. That's my, good, my point is like, does the school get it okay from somebody to tear it down? Or? Not from the council. I know, that's my point. <laughs> the, school, the city's position is that we don't own it anymore. Well, we did own it, and to me, it was only fair to do that. And I agree with you. I was just, I'm just curious since it's already down. I mean, was the was water tower on the school property? Yes. 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 I, I can see where Chris is coming from. Yeah. <laughs> but I think as that, far as goodwill would go, I think. I'm absolutely in favor of it. I was just, yeah. Chris brought that point up. Was, uh, <laughs> so we have a motion to go forward to pay the city. Was it seconded by anybody? No, sir. Chuck seconds. Any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One opposed. Okay. If I may, if that Perfect. tower that the city used, that we paid no, if you looked at it, it's on school property, we paid no rental when we had our wireless equipment up there for 12 years, 100 bucks a month, 12 years, so it's quite a bargain. So that vote was four to one with one day. Uh, I guess my first thought would be is what if it was a historical landmark or something they've already taken it down without seeking advice from the council so that, that's my believe it was checked that was right there's no history of the right. so the next thing we have is an local agreement between the city of austin indiana city of scottsburg indiana and scott county uh indiana regarding the offender work crews so if you were had the chance to read through that what this is is that basically a shared status with Scottsburg and Austin with uh, uh, offenders working for both entities. Austin would have offenders three days, Scottsburg would have them two days. The next week, Scottsburg would have three offenders or have the offenders three days and Austin two days. We rotate back and forth. So I know right now we opted not to go forward with the state's program. That was sixty-four thousand. You're conceding this is just ten thousand dollars. So we both entities, uh, uh, Austin and Scottsburg, both say we would like to do this. So we bring it before the council to make sure you are in agreement with this as well. This will help in our uh, weeding, our mowing, uh, our areas where we are, are uh, need more help. Yeah, that was my question. Is which departments get most parks? Mostly, or mostly, the mostly parks. Okay, that parks. makes sense. Parks is going to be the main thing. If you figure we have five miles of trail, yeah. we have six parks. We have. We also ask the state to give us the authority to mow our own energy. Okay. If you remember last year, you had grass up past your knees. Oh yeah. So we want to keep those. We want the first taste of that hamburger, or scotch burger, to taste good when you get off that air strip. When it was kept mowed and manicured. We also have people who are in violation and not mowing the properties. So we have many, many properties to mow, and uh, and the more help we get at this point would be a great assistance. So, uh, and we have the funds to do it. Mm -hmm. So.
So just want you to know that as well. What other questions would you have with us? Okay, hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll entertain a motion to go forward with this interlocal agreement between Austin, Scottsburg, and Scott County. I'll make the motion. The Olga makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Christian Evans seconds. Is there any other questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, the next thing we have is, is the first reading of ordinance 2021-12 in order to establish a contractor uh, registration program. Now, I know this has been brought up in previous councils, so it's before you tonight with Ms. Ashley has gone over this and I think has worked with both Josh and Christian Evans. Is this right, Christian? Would you like to comment on this? Sir? No, Josh uh, and I have spoke I guess a couple of meetings ago when this was brought up, talked about some potential amendments. Um, he was able to rewrite this ordinance from what my perspective is. I think it's, um, you know, eliminate some of the fluff. It's very um, cut and dry, black and white, if you will. Um, I think it's very simple, very easy to read. Um, and I think it provides some um, guardrails, if you will, for some of our contractors to be doing work in our city, making sure that the city is holding them accountable for the work that they're doing. Um, I think it's fair um, for both parties. So I think this is very well written by Josh, and um, I, I think this is where we need to add my opinion. So. A couple of highlights from our last discussion was there is no registration fee. There is a three-step fine process. So if you're found to be in violation, you didn't get registered before you started a project. First offense is $50, second is $100. And then the third and any subsequent offenses is $2,500. So that two gifts so as we talked about the uh, fear of, I think the previous one had the same fine every offense that at a certain point it's just not cost, they're not going to have any incentive to go register. So we create it that way. We include language that this is not a, a city endorsement program. We're not endorsing these contractors in any way. This is a just a registration, make sure that they, we know that we're doing work and that they have insurance. Um, and we did some forms to go along with this. If you are a homeowner, um, you do not have to register, but there is a form that you're going to sign that says you understand that you are taking on a contractor's role, but you do still have to follow the building code and um, that you run the possibility of not being in compliance with the building code and having to hire a contractor at some point to correct the labor. So um, no fee to anyone, but it does call some attention to the homeowner of the uh, importance of the building code and what activity they're getting ready to take on. I just reiterate a couple of points. I think, you know, part of the conversation we had about the no fee, I think having the no fee, in my opinion, really encourages the contractors that we do have to sign up, um, obviously, and, and uh, obtain and keep their registration. Um, so it lets us obviously track who is doing work in the city. Um, and then also, Josh and I had a conversation about, and I think it is, I'm trying to go find it right now. Um, yes, the application was it defined that this was for the contractor and this could not cover subcontractors as well. So if there's a builder, for example, his, all of his subcontractors would not be covered under one registration. So they were all individually have to be registered to do work in the city. So an electrician would have to? Correct. Okay. If he had some company, he would have to. Right. Yeah. But again, there's no fees involved. And that's that was my point. I, I, you know, I disagree because I think the fee will cause the money to be registered. It doesn't have to be a large fee. But to me, I know very few cities that don't charge a fee. I think that's to our benefit, in my opinion. We have about 500 homes on the docket right now. Uh, my biggest, I'm okay either way. I, I just think the second offense should be higher than $100. I think it should be $250. I mean, if you've already paid a $50 fine, that would be like me driving. I mean, I just don't. At a certain point, somebody gets so many points, we take away their driver's license. You know, and I, I just think that if, you know, the $50 fine, I get that. They should go in and get it. 
How could you get a $100 fine for your second offense and not be aware that you're breaking the code? I mean, it should be a little stiff, stiffer than, than $100. I, I just think that, okay, I get 50, we go to 250, and then it goes up to 2,500. I mean, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. I think it's just like, you know, human nature. I go back to teaching school. Sometimes adults behave just like children. <laughs> and if they can get by with something, they, they'll try to. I mean, <clears throat> I, know it's, I don't understand why they wouldn't sign up for Christian. But, you know. Yeah, I'm not, definitely not that sad. I, I think that was just a number we okay. pulled up. I think that was, yeah, I, those numbers, I. No, it's double the first of them. I, I, and I see why you doubled them, but I think well, then we jumped to 2,500. Yeah, and that's why I'm 50, the, you said 250. So if you go from 50 to, that's five times the original five. Yeah. And then you go to yeah. 10 times is what I'm thinking. Make it, make it five. You know? That's just my personal opinion. I'm mm -hmm. just one vote. Yeah. So then is it going to be the city's responsibility to control all of these people? Well, it's the building. Don't we have a building? We do. We do. So if he goes out there and he sees his son who's, who did this work, he'd be already coming back. We're now inspecting his work. He, we don't know who this was. So the way this would typically play out is when they come to pull permits. Is that person that whoever they're dealing with at the city to pull those permits? And that's, that's, been my, that's been my issue the whole time is we're only talking about people who are willing to come and pull permits. So when we're talking about fees or whoever, in, in Terry, your, your example, more than likely that person who's going to come in, do the work, and then leave, they're probably not interested in even pulling the permit. Right. So that's when I was talking about the, the fee. The people who would be charged a fee would be the people who are trying to do it correctly. That's, so that's why, in my mind, I said let's incentivize people to register without having a fee. And then obviously, to Rick's point, if they are pulling permits and are not compliant, then there would be a fine to um, and to incentivize them to register and make sure that they're doing what they're doing. Or if somebody reports, hey, there's a group working, Correct. but I know they're not yeah. certified, we might want to check that out. Right. And this council will do whatever. I mean, this administration will do whatever this council wants. Yeah. So. I mean, I think it, it, I think it's just obviously at this point. Um, Moving forward, is I think there needs to be obviously guide rails to give uh, Jeff to, to, to work under. I think that's what we talked about last time. Um, so I'm okay with any, I think that language about the fine, I think we were just kind of copy and pasting on it. Sure. I don't know that there was too much, I mean, I know there was some thought into it, I don't want to say that, but um, I think whatever that second fine needs to be, I think we would be, be able to work with. I think this is, it's in a better position today, and I would feel comfortable going forward with. That as amended, if that's kind of the intention of the I like the idea of a two fifty. I think that's a suggestion. It's not me. I mean, I, I, I know, Rick, Rick, you know, we're, we're going to be kind on the front end with no fee, but if you're not required, then the stick needs to be a little heavier, I think, from the, from the front end. So. so this will be a first reading tonight, so we can approve on first reading as is, and then. And the next meeting, the second reading, we can approve as amended. And I will take that amendment. And just, I, I know I brought this up before, but I want to make sure that we're talking about that this applies only to contractors, uh, not any men who might, you know, might hire a replacement gun. That would be, uh, put a shed. That would be covered by the owners. Yeah, I'm just saying, though, I want to make sure that, yeah. that I understand. Yeah, so you hire someone that does work on your property then I'll without a contract. Correct. Right. Without a contract. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like I, I hired a guy to to put a shed for me. If no building permit was required. <clears throat> so if no building permit is required, then know that this one not directly. Well, that's that's, that's, the, okay. that's that's that was my understanding before. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that that's that's we what we are voting on. So is there a motion before then on first reading of ordinance 2021-12 to establish a contract for registration program? I'll make a motion. Should have any motions or a second? I'll 
I'll second. A little bit of seconds. Questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. You have it. Pass it on first reading. Uh, announcements. Jess, would you give us the COVID-19 statistics for today, please? Yes. So this week we're up six new cases for a total of 2,705 total cases in Scott County since this began. Um, one of the things that they wanted to let everybody know is for the vaccine clinics, you can do walk-ins or now you don't have to have an appointment. And then all three vaccine clinics each week, they will have your option of any of the three vaccines you want. So you can go and get the Pfizer, the Moderna, or the Johnson & Johnson. And those vaccine clinics are Mondays from 3 to 5 p.m. Thursdays and Fridays, it is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., but they will be closed from 12 to 1 for lunch. So we just want to encourage everybody that would like a vaccine to go out and see them during those times. So they currently have the Johnson & Johnson now. Yes, and they are currently doing all three vaccines at any time. Right? Yes. And let me tell you this. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't flown recently, but I know there are areas that you do have to show your vaccine, your vaccines, I don't know what it is. So, uh, so whether you've had one shot or two shots, and uh, so uh, that being said, but we're down to six. Where last week it was fourteen, wasn't it? Yeah. So we're down considerably. So we're back down single digits. That's no one. So uh, that's that's very positive. So. What else do we have for this evening? Um, I need. I want to make council aware that we have, and I told you that's what I would do to update you on the progress at the sewer plant. Um, we did. I did authorize the first payout that was uh, approved by the uh, developer Greg Marks and then the engineer uh, Mark Sullivan of Midwestern, and then they sent it to me third to just sign off on the city's behalf. So uh, PayApp 1 has been approved to Bowen uh, Construction Company in the amount of $1,330,760.53. One so we are progressing down there. It appears to be very nicely. If you've not been asked, make sure you swing by every now and then. What we've done so far is we have, we have everything lined up for the reactors. We have subterrain uh, drillings and uh, so we began putting geo piers in to hold these to hold these reactors and uh, so we, we, we bored on the front we bored in the back we didn't bore in the middle the middle has was a little bit higher so we're going to have to raise raise it up another foot it's not costing city any more money if, if you know this is a no no more expensive period so uh, but we are telling you that they're going to raise it another foot higher. So, uh, old plans. But it's moving very nicely. These guys are right after it. They're, they're given a date also that they're going to be probably working through the night as well. Uh, so that's in June? The last, yeah, the last weekend in June. Yeah. yeah. So, it's going to be pouring on concrete. <laughs> There's going to be probably two months for the year. Tremendous amount of concrete, tremendous amount of reinforcement going in here. So, uh, we've got all of the train ready to go, so we're ready to rock and roll. So, any other questions on that? Okay. Mr. President, do you have anything else for us? I have nothing. Anything? Or anybody else have anything? Okay, we'll uh, have a motion to adjourn. I can do that. Motion, we're adjourned. Thank you so very much. So